Welcome, guys, to The Rake. Uh, we have zero special guests today. It's just me and Marles doing our uh, throwback, how we used to, and we're just going to discuss a bunch of topics together. Um, actually, a lot of things have come up in the last week in poker, uh, including WSOP holding a second main event um, coming up, and there's obviously the Galfon Challenge, there's a Doug d Challenge, uh, random election bets. The biggest news is Crouton Turn 5. Um, <laughs> what's going on with you, Marles? I'm doing good. I'm hanging tough here in Dublin. Um, I've been playing some online poker. The online EPT just ended, so I've been playing a bunch of those and uh, making some content always. And then, um, yeah, just been paying attention to what's going out, going, going on out there. Watching a lot of poker vlogs and a lot of the unique content to be made right now. There's a um, there's a new there was a new little uh, Twitch like tournament with all the Twitch streamers this week, which I thought was really cool and just been kind of keeping my eye out what's been going on. So we're going to talk about all that today. Yeah, that's cool. I actually just caught the end of that one. That was party poker that ran that, right? It was, um, it was a bunch of content creators outside of poker as well going for like a free roll. So I don't know. I think that's cool. All those initiatives where they actually bring new people into poker instead of just recycling all the poker pros we already have, like get with the same audiences they already have. I feel like they're doing a really good thing for our community when they do that. We're seeing it more and more. And we're also seeing the different sites coming together more and more to kind of work together. We also have that new show, new-ish called The Orbit, which I think is really cool. Um, for those of you who don't know, The Orbit is a show um, hosted by Robbie. Um, I'm not sure how, how to say his last name, but um, but he gets like industry professionals from like all the different sites and all the different, you know, aspects and they all come together and they discuss these big issues. And I think it's cool that we're seeing more um, camaraderie. And like you said, um, there's so many people outside of poker getting involved. Stars is working with the side men who's like a huge YouTube channel and Nasi is huge. And then, you know, there's even like other um, Twitch streamers who, do games or doing poker now. So it's really good to see. And uh, I don't know, it's booming for sure. Yeah, it's cool. I think it's one of the good side effects of being stuck at home is a lot of people are trying to find new ways to make interesting content when normally they would just be out playing poker at tournaments and stuff like that. Like I'm, I'm going to participate with Faded Spade in a couple more charity streams. Um, and these are with people that would normally have networking events that have nothing to do with poker. They'd be doing live like cocktail parties and stuff like that, but clearly they can't do that right now. So we're just going to hold some charity streams. So it's like kind of, I don't know, it's cool how people who didn't want their businesses to fail have been forced to kind of innovate and poker has been included in a lot of them where they normally wouldn't even care. So, yeah, I think it's, I think it's good too, because we're also kind of so small that I think when sometimes an industry gets too big. Um, you have to play by the book a little bit, but because we're so small and kind of niche, we take the, we take more risks, which I think pays off, mm-hmm. which is nice. Um, one risk I don't know if it's going to pay off for WSOP or not, which we wanted to talk about, was that WSOP just announced last week that they're partnering with GG to have a 2020 main event. Not like the fake main event they just held that they called the main event, but now it's the real main event. Um, No quotation marks. So a lot has been said about this. And I was just wondering what your initial take was. My initial take was that shock and not understanding um, what they were going to, what they were trying to do and the logistics of it seemed a bit of a stretch and also just feeling bad for Stoyan. I'm not sure how to say his name correctly. Hope I am, but who won the GG main event that they already had and such a prestigious title that to kind of renege on that kind of seems a bit odd. Yeah. He had the same kind of response to it. That was my first thought. I was like, that's kind of weird. Uh, And Timex actually made the point that if the, the woman who got second for, I think she won like 2 million bucks or something, if she had won, like, would they be trying to take that away? Because it would be even more historic that, oh, my God, a woman didn't just final table it. She won the main event. Would they have taken that distinction away from her? Probably not. They might not have considered how much of a 
like, I don't know, not a needle. I, I don't, I don't know if they, if they realize how much it meant to Stoya and that he won, that he was expecting a banner to be put up in the Rio, that he was wanting it as the real main event. Um, I think they're realizing it now uh, after people are kind of speaking up about it, but what can really be done? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I, we've obviously seen a lot of big name poker pros and people in an industry speaking out against it on Twitter and publicly. And I don't know. I, I hope that they reconsider honestly, because it's like, what's, it's just going to annoy people. I, I think if they listen to the industry, you know what I mean? Like we were just saying, you know, you have to listen to the people. Yeah. So. I think it will end up making them a lot more rake though. It's just people, the main event has this luster that other events just don't have. Um, so they might end up just getting more players because of that. And, and when you have an industry that is definitely hurting because of COVID, they can't run their live circuit events. They're losing money this year, I'm sure. Um, it's hard to tell them, no, you can't make rake in this spot where it's a really good spot for you. Um, but yeah, Stoyan's tweet will put it up for you guys. He said, so I won the 51st annual World Series of Poker main event. What will the December one be? The 52nd, 51.1, 51.2.0, 51 alpha. And he includes a picture of his bracelet with the note um, signed by Negranu with GG and WSOP um, congratulating him on his main event win. And, and it has the other things with it too, like diamond card status. So it's all the stuff that you would get for winning the main. I don't know. I, I could see it just being disappointing for him. Um, there is some excitement surrounding it though. There's not a whole lot going on right now. The COVID numbers are getting way worse, especially in Vegas. So, you know, there is some appeal to being able to play a big event online, but then they decided to make the final table live. What are your feelings about that? That's the craziest part of all. And there's obviously a travel aspect for a lot of people. And then of course, before you sit down, you have to get a COVID test. And if you test positive, you apparently um, get ninth place prize, no matter what your chip stack is. So that seems a bit hard to maneuver. Um, obviously you're asking people to make potentially fly and spend money there. It's like, I don't know how realistic it is. I don't know how realistic it is. Yeah, I think that the COVID test also, if you've read up about some of the rapid tests, they have false positives pretty often. So yeah, there can just be a huge problem with that because you can test positive having taken, you could live in a bubble after final tabling this, right? And just like drive to play this final table, um, sit down for their COVID test and get a false positive and get ninth place having done absolutely nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a huge problem. And I don't know. I just think I know that they want to produce it for ESPN. They don't want there to be no World Series main event on on TV this year. I totally understand that. And I will definitely watch it. Um, but I don't know if it's really worth it because it kind of it kind of does tarnish the whole main event when when it's nothing close to what they usually would produce. Um, and I know everyone has had to make different change like a lot of changes in their lives right now so you're not going to get the perfect situation but I think this is probably not this isn't the best idea I've ever heard no and I think that I mean I will say that the I played the main on GG and of course we would assume this but it was not even as close to as soft as it usually is it was quite tough I played two I fired two bullets in the 5k mm -hmm. and both fields were like I mean they had multiple flights and they were very rug heavy. And I mean, especially to the, the normal main event is usually one of the best fields of any poker tournament ever. And um, I expect this to be even tougher. I would say, you know, if it goes in New Jersey and Nevada, uh, I don't know if they're okay. going to get 200 players for the U S facing main event. Um, for one thing, it's it's hard to get that amount of money online. Obviously, if you're a reg, you have that money from just playing all the time. But if you're someone who's a rec player, um, you'd have to physically go to the casino with cash, which is not really something most people want to do right now, especially because Vegas is like, I don't know, there's, just, there's outbreaks in a lot of places, but Vegas especially, people come here to party and be irresponsible, and, and that's what's happening. Um, so actually getting the cash online is hard. Um, I don't know if people are going to travel for a single event. That's not going to be that soft um, unless they're like very close to New Jersey or Nevada. Maybe they'll get New Yorkers and Philly people. 
Uh, I just don't see this being a huge event. It's not going to be obviously the 8,000 player fields that uh, the real main event brings. Um, so I don't know, it, whatever. I guess this year, every title and everything will have a little asterisk next to it because it's just a strange year in everyone's lives. So maybe that's the story. Just, okay, we'll have two main event champions and two yeah. banners and everyone kind of knows it was a weird year. It was weird. and But the only thing, I, I do feel bad for Stoyan because... I hope that his title isn't watered down, not only by being online, but by being one of two potentially, because he probably beat an even tougher field. It was a smaller field, but like it was a tougher field. There's no doubt. Mm -hmm. So I think it's almost worth more. It's a, it's a bigger accomplishment. So I don't know. I, yeah, and people said, Oh, he won millions of dollars. He should just shut up. And it's like, people are allowed to have opinions. You know, it's okay. He's not whining about winning millions of dollars. He's saying, wait a second, like this was important to me. And, you know, it kind of feels like it's being taken away from him. So I don't know. I don't think he's whining. I think he makes a good point. I think it's interesting to discuss and who knows. I mean, it's all stuff where it's like poker's about winning money, but also some people it's different. Like me and you, I feel like we want to win money and and continue in this game. For some people, it is the legacy of um, titles and bracelets, player of the year, stuff that people chase. So you know, who are we to tell him that his opinion is not valid here? That's the only reason why I play tournaments. If I wanted to, if I wanted to actually get EV and value, I'd just play cash for the rest of my life. Why am I playing tournaments? <laughs> like, I mean, it's softer, but like, uh, it is higher variance. But the other mm-hmm. aspect I want to talk about quickly is the people that bet on this and how fun that's going to be <laughs> to decide, you know, if they won or not, because it's mm-hmm. kind of dicey. Yeah, this is where having the details spelled out, every permutation of how this year could go, you have to have it spelled out. Like, I'm a dork from being a lawyer. If I had bet on this, it would have been, this counts, this doesn't count. If this happens, this, you know, a lot of people did do that. I know I talked to Doug Polk. He had uh, some bets on this. It was spelled out exactly what it meant. A lot of people had a clause in there that was something like, if Negranu holds a six person live sit and go for a bracelet, that doesn't count. So they actually did spell out like around what things would count or not. Uh, I know that some of the smaller bets with some people who aren't seasoned prop bettors, they're going to be a mess. I, I don't know. Consensus on Twitter seemed to be that this does not count because it's not a live event. It's just a live final table, um, which, you know, the WPT is having live final tables starting December as well. Um, so I don't know. I, we'll see. Maybe this will give some work to um, some arbitrators or lawyers that that want to take this on because they probably don't say, have a whole lot of work. A friend of friend of the pod, Mac for standing um, lawyer from Mike Postle's trial, sp- uh, spoke out about this early on too and gave his two cents. So maybe we will can throw up the his his take on it here as well. Mm-hmm. Um, he had said stuff about it while the bets were being placed, right? I, I vaguely remember yeah. that him just being like, be careful, yeah. <laughs> like have this drafted out. Don't just make like handshake bets with, you know, wishy-washy terms. It should be in writing. So Yeah, for sure. It's going to be interesting to see. Um, might be a nice segue to the next topic, maybe. People are still betting on the election. And <laughs> <laughs> crazy. And if, this is, if you're watching this in the future, this is now November 16th. So we are a good two weeks, two weeks <laughs> after and a solid week after Biden has officially been called from all the media sources and he has made his victory lap and it's official and people are still betting on this. Yeah. Right. Well, all right. So Trump has posted that he won the election and, and that all there's all this fraud and everything. But the cases that, that have actually made it to court. Uh, I think they won one out of 20. And the one case they won was for a, a handful of votes in a certain location. Um, there are there are too many states. I think there's four states that, you know, two days after the election were still being counted. Um, and that they were like, okay, well, if he wins Pennsylvania, then maybe dispute these other states because maybe there there's enough voter fraud or there's enough of a legal case to have a recount and all this. But I have no idea what's going on. People are getting 10 to 1. Dan O'Brien, David Tuckman um, are all over Twitter getting this like easy money. And so many people, they got so much action. I think they're done taking action. Mm -hmm. I think these people are crazy. I don't know if, uh, I don't know if they have some info that we just don't have. If there are certain websites that are claiming that, you know, there'll be faithless electors that 
that are just going to go rogue um, and put Trump in states where Biden won. But I don't know. What are your thoughts on this? My thoughts are number one. I saw yesterday that Mike Mattisau, number one Trump supporter of all time, tweeted that he is like tweeted at Trump being like, hey, bro, like you have no evidence. Stop <laughs> fucking with us here. Either lay some, this is Mike, when Mike Mattisau throws in the towel, yeah. you, it's over, man. It's over. And, and not only Mike Mattisau, there are so many uh, famous politicians and pundits, Republican, you know, even Fox News that are, that are not, look, they would be hanging on to the bitter end. You know, they would, and they've thrown the towel. So I don't, I, I don't know. I don't have any hope for these people. I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. I had a couple of people like uh, Ashley Hine hit me up to see if I would um, escrow for them. And I just like, it was hard not to try to talk her out of betting it, but uh, it's not my place. If someone is a grown up and they want to make a bet and my other friend is on the other side of that bet, make the bet, you know, it's fine. Um, but I, I don't know. It's just like, it depends what news you watch and what con like what kind of content you consume, I guess. But each side feels so strongly that they're getting the better end of this. It's just wild to me. because I feel like we are living, uh, everyone always talks about a multiverse, but I feel like we have one going on right now where not everyone on this planet is living in the same reality. They're not. And yeah, this election was so crazy. It was that that night was so insane because the betting lines were going wild. Uh, obviously, we know that at one point Biden was a huge dog, and mm-hmm. Spraggy actually. I know a lot of people did, but a lot of people he put another bet on at that point, getting something insane six like to one, six to one. Yeah, he bet more at that. Yeah, like and it it was just an insane year with the mail in voting, and um, I think a lot of people in poker made a lot of money. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah, that day I was a huge fish because I was very into the election this year. I spent a lot of time reading and, and just consuming a lot of info about it um, and and knew and everyone had said it will look like this at some point that it'll look like Trump is running away with it because more Democrats were afraid of COVID, more Democrats were going to vote by mail and that those votes in multiple key states would be the last votes counted. So this is what's going to happen. And still at like 7 p.m. Pacific, when it's looking five or six to one in, in Trump's favor, I didn't put any money down because I was like, oh, man, I, everyone in the everyone on TV seems pretty scared Trump's going to win right now. Um, and I didn't put money in because I'm like, oh, OK, I guess like they're still factoring in mail-in ballots and still thinking that this is the correct line. But apparently, no. Did everyone just forget that that's what they were expecting the whole time? People called it. I remember Kyle Kalinske um, was on Rogan and he was even saying like, hey guys, this is not real. Like this is, he, he warned beforehand, there's going to be a red wave, a red mirage, I think he called it. And there's going to be, this is what he expected. And, and a lot of people did. I think I saw like Liv Marie, um, Spraggy, obviously a lot of people were, were trying to buy action when, at this moment when Trump is on top. And cause they just knew that like, it's going to come back down. They mm-hmm. just a mirage when they count the mail and voting. It's going to come back down. So it yeah. was interesting. I don't it's know if they're still hanging on we'll, at this point, but they are. We can, yeah, we can find the funnier tweets of them because there are <laughs> some people that, I don't know, I was laughing the whole time because I'm, I'm looking at when Timex is offering lines. You yeah. just don't, don't let Timex get the best of you, right? <laughs> that should be rule number one. And so many people underneath, like, are making these crazy bets. There were people who were, um, get, it was only eight to one or something. And then there were some people 16 to one. So even, even if you're betting that day where it's a crazy bet to make, in my opinion, people weren't even searching for the best lines. They were just taking whatever action they could get. Like, okay, sure. I think Trump's going to win. I'll lay what, like, whatever it is. Like, okay, cool. I can get eight to one. Awesome. Not even looking. I'm like, you could probably get 16 to one. You can get way better than that. Yeah. Um, so just a lot of crazy bets going on, but poker world is like that. It's like we are, everyone always has to have some money on everything. Uh, mm-hmm. And I don't know, man, the betting sharps just crush everyone. Cause I, I, I feel like at some point I would feel bad taking someone's bet, knowing that they're basically drawing to a coup or they're drawing to like Republicans who will throw out all the mail-in votes but if they ever did that that's disenfranchising all the troops do they really want to set that precedent i wouldn't like that's they you know they're voting absentees they have to um 
yeah, I don't know. I just feel like we, we know the ending here unless America just dissolves, I think. But who who knows? Maybe there's some loophole I have no idea about. There, I think I think the biggest telling things the Repu- Republicans and the conservatives called it. They're they're done with Trump. They're not there's no evidence. And again, there's so many states that he would have to overturn. Even if you've got through and won, okay, well, that's not even enough to win. That's best case scenario. Okay, you prove there's fraud in one state. Okay, it doesn't even mean anything. So, yeah. Anyways, well, we'll see what happens. Some people got their money in really good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you know, my dad used to do that with me just to teach me not to be a sucker. He would ask me, Oh, do you want to put a dollar on this baseball game? And I'd be like, yeah, sure. I'll take this team. He'd be like, okay, cool. And then he'd be like, idiot, it's a replay. <laughs> to just make me re- like realize that, you know, you, you should pay more attention before you put money on something. That's so I don't know if it's exactly the scenario, but it seems kind of like it is. <laughs> we interrupt this podcast with an important message from our sponsors at Run It Once. In case you missed it, sit and goes have officially arrived at Run It Once Poker. And if you're a first-time depositor, we want you to try them out on us. If you make your first deposit by the end of November, you'll unlock 50 euros worth of S&G Select tickets plus an extra 20% rakeback on top of the rakeback already offered through our popular Legends Rewards program. And that's not all. You'll also receive our long-standing welcome bonus that matches 100% of your deposits up to 600 euros for 30 days. For full details, head to once.run slash select. And if you're looking to improve your game, head on over to Run It Once Training, where you'll find the largest library of high-quality poker training content on the web, with two new videos posted daily from an incredible stable of some of the greatest minds in the game, including Run It Once founder Phil Galfond. Sign up today at once.run slash learn and you'll get free access to three of our elite level videos. And now back to the pod. Um, the next thing totally unrelated, uh, but the Doug Dineggs challenge right now. Um, Doug was ahead. All right. So first it started out, Dineggs won the live portion of it for quite a bit. Doug pulled ahead $180,000. He just spanked him in, in two massive online sessions. And then... Friday, uh, Daniel just won 200K in one session. It was crazy. Uh, we, Doug I, had been up that session too. <laughs> um, we Just in case anybody lives under a rock and you don't know what we're talking about, um, Daniel and Doug are doing a challenge. Um, 25,000 hands, heads up, grudge match. Obviously, you guys know they have history. Um, and they are into their challenge now, 1,500 hands. And they did one live session, which was televised on Poker Go. You can watch that if you want. And now they're playing online. And sorry, you can. I just want to make sure. No, that was good. You, I always get in trouble for just being like, of course, everyone knows what we're talking yeah. about. Um, but some people just, some people have no interest in heads up, no interest in Doug and Daniel. So no, that was a good recap. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're about I think fifteen hundred hands uh, into the challenge at this point. The swings have just been massive, though. I was expecting swings, but not two hundred thousand dollars swings over the course of just two hours. Um, and then, pretty interesting tweet. Uh, Moonlight Master compiled all of the hands uh, at their all, uh, all the all in EV of the entire match so far. Um, Daniel's up 25k, and with all in EV, he would be up actually around 200k, um, which is you know it's interesting, but not it doesn't tell the whole story because if we're looking at card distribution too, which is always a factor, like you can have bad all in EV, but you could also have Kings versus aces. Like that can just happen where it's like clearly the right move to get in Kings, but you lose anyway. Um, So that's kind of, it's kind of interesting though that someone's willing to sit and write down every hand, every board, when the money goes in uh, and, and how much, you know, the EV is. And I think that's really cool. It must be nice to be pretty famous. You you could just be like, Hey, Twitter, can someone do three hours of work and tell me if I'm ahead? (laughs) And that's so great about our industry. Like people just volunteer. There are so many volunteers um, in all these major poker events, but. Yeah. It reminds me of the apostle thing with Galfon just being, yeah. you know, being interested in proving it one way or the other, um, putting money and man hours behind it. 
just to get to the bottom of it. I think our industry is cool for that with just curious people who are willing to do a lot of data crunching for us. Yeah. So it's looking like, you know, obviously Daniel, for those of you who don't know, is a huge underdog coming into this match. I think he's something like five or six to one people are getting on him. Um, and so at, at this point he's up like a half a buy-in or something after 1500 hands. But like Jamie said, he should be up more just based on this um, small EV calculation for all in thoughts. Um, I want them to do more, more live matches. That was a great, that was a great. I think so too. I think that's a really good way to keep the interest in the match, even though, I mean, it was a letdown for almost everyone. Everyone wanted there to be shit talking and the like awkward uncomfortableness that we know Doug is capable of when he wears the more is better billboard in a massive buy-in. Uh, it was like the super high roller bowl. I think um, he's willing to put himself in that spot and make everyone super awkward uh, just for, he calls it the lulls. It, it's funny. And you see how people react to you. I thought there was going to be more of that. I think everyone thought there was going to be more of that. And then they were just, kind of nice to each other it'd be like if me and you sat at a table there were no deal you're just like oh we're just here to enjoy each other's company and and win and lose 100k uh so i don't know maybe maybe it'll change in the middle of the match if someone is stuck a lot and then they go do a 200 hand match at poker go maybe it'll be a little bit more interesting a little more cutthroat you know i made this tweet a long time ago that when most of the time when i talk to someone in real life i end up liking them more after the conversation and on Twitter, mm -hmm. I usually end up liking them less, even if it's in my <laughs> life. I'm like, ugh. I feel like this is a good example of that. Like, it's kind of hard to hate, like, because these two guys, for all intents and purposes, like, don't like each other. They're, I don't want to say they hate each other, but they're nemesis. And I don't know. I just feel like when you're in front of somebody, you see their flaws, you see their humanity, you see their. So, you know, their inner child or whatever. And you're just like, oh, that's just some guy. Why do I yeah. hate that person so much? And I feel like that kind of happens. And I think it's kind of sweet. I, I think it's kind of sweet. You know, It is nice. I think it, you do kind of like, you want to be agreeable in person. It's just so awkward to hate someone in person. Yeah. Where do you go from there? If they sat next to me, across from each other for four hours and just were seething and needling, it would have been very uncomfortable. Um, but also, I don't know, I feel differently about Twitter and things like that, though, because I think you do get more authenticity from someone on Twitter because they sit there and they think about what they want to say, what point they want to make, and they write it down and they edit it and they go, this is what I mean, and they send it. So in person, you might just be agreeable and like, okay, yeah, I don't know, we sort of agree on this, whatever. And I think on Twitter, you kind of do see more of like what's internal in people. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Not everyone. Some people just are on there to bullshit. I enjoy people just sending dog pictures and making jokes and stuff like that. But I do think when someone makes a point on Twitter, it's usually more thought out. It's more what they're really thinking for real. Totally. Totally. And even with Doug and Daniel, um, I don't think that they didn't mean the savage things that they say to each other online. They, they I'm sure they do mean it. Um, they, they do feel it deep down inside, but I just think that talking to a computer screen seeing having it having an image of somebody in your head and hating that image is so much it's almost like that to me is like fake but then when you see the person when you interact with them you realize like i just hate this image of them in my head i don't actually i didn't i don't actually know that them mm -hmm. and i don't know it just changes things for me it's happened to me i mean there are people i've interacted with on twitter and that i've met in real life at a tournament stop or run it up Reno, whatever. And I'm like, Oh, that person's fine. Like, yeah. Whatever. Well, most people don't suck. I agree. I think Twitter does like make people a more extreme version of themselves. And cause yeah. you're not going to tweet. We've talked about this before. You're not going to tweet your middle of the road thoughts that nobody cares about. You're only going to tweet when you're fired up about something one way or the other. So you're getting only the extremes of everyone. And when you talk in person, you're not just going to sit with someone and be like, listen, I think you're racist. Like, there's not going to be yeah. some crazy thing like that. You're probably going to talk about something in common that you're playing a tournament. You're going to talk about that or some news event, whatever. You're not going after them for like their most extreme viewpoints and they're not going after you for yours. So I think there is like, there is some truth to that. And, and on Twitter, it's very easy. If you have an image of what you think someone is and you have a negative view of them, you're going to give them the least mm -hmm. benevolent read 
of whatever they said. You're just going to say, oh, this asshole is talking again. Let's see what the, and it could just be a joke. It could be sarcasm, but you're going to take it in the worst way possible. Yeah, um, for sure. I think, you know, not to pick on Mike Masso, I don't have any problem, Mike, but it's like he, on Twitter, he's very obviously pro-Trump and he's very aggressive sometimes with his things. But then like when I watched him do that, um, that homage to Mike Sexton and stuff, I like, and I see him live and I see him in these like vulnerable kind of real moments, him, it, it, it may, I, I feel so much more like empathy for him in that moment. And I realize like, oh, this is just a guy who gets fired up about some sh- stupid shit. But like, I don't know, I see his like inner child or something. And I'm just like, and I just like, it's, so- it makes me soft when I see that. I don't know. Yeah. How- he's an, he's an outer child too. <laughs> <laughs> he's an outer child, which comes out on Twitter and in real life. Yeah. But there's something sweet about him and like at times. His and, tribute and I, was nice. The the Mike Sexton tribute. I was like I was really surprised. I participated in that and Mike did a very good job. He was the ringleader, just giving everyone their chance to talk and then he'd reflect on what the person said and he'd move to the next person and like you definitely he's a very emotional person and his heart was exposed. He was extremely sad, obviously, about losing Mike. Um and yeah, I thought that was I, I couldn't believe how how well he did um with that. And yeah, take out politics and all the stuff that I will definitely disagree with him on. Um, there is some common ground you can find when you're yeah. face-to-face with somebody. Anyways, a bit um, of a tangent, but um, what's next? Oh, we have Galfon Challenge. Oh, yeah, So Galfon this has Challenge. been, yeah, the Chance and Galfon matchup has been crazy. Uh, the swings have been huge. And Galfon finally got him back for a little bit. He was stuck a lot, over 300K to Chance. Um which I don't think was I, I don't think in the beginning of the, the discussion where he had all his competitors mapped out, I don't think Chance was his biggest concern. He had Venny and Action Freak. Um and Chance just has been crushing this match and they're they're through quite a bit of it already. So I don't know if you caught some of it um or what your thoughts are. My thoughts are that Phil seems to like to give himself a challenge in the beginning and then be the <laughs> be the comeback kid, apparently. Um, but I have no doubt he'll do it. Chance is a capable appoint, opponent, but Chance is a big dog, right? Or, or a relatively big dog going in. And yeah, he got odds on the side bet. I believe three to one, maybe. I'll have to check on that. But yeah, I mean, he's getting odds on a side bet, so he's not the favorite, according to Phil and Chance. Yeah, and just to give you guys a recap of this, they're, they're doing, how many hands are they doing? Um, I'll look it up. They're doing a similar uh, sample of hands, another heads up grudger match, um, Phil Gaffon and Chance Corneth. And Phil is a huge favorite. Um, it's interesting to see these two grudge matches. The dog, the underdogs are both winning at this point. We're, we're pretty, we're pretty, uh, you know, we have a long way to go. But yeah. Crazy to, yes. see, crazy to see it. Sorry, uh, it's 35K hands that they're playing, um, and they're 13,500 hands through. Uh, Chance is up 221K, but but actually, Phil just won 123 back, so it had been, what is that, 344K that Chance had been up. Um, and yeah, Chance got 4-1 to one on his 250K side bet to win a million from Phil. So, I mean, Phil thought he was an underdog enough. Um Something that people always say about Chance, though, is that his strength is in being like unpredictable and in adjusting to his opponents. Mm-hmm. I know that he's kind of a like tricky player, so I don't know if he's... I don't know. I don't know if, uh, if Phil didn't prepare as much for this match or if Chance has just been in the lab crushing his studying or if this is going to be another Venny match where you know, Phil just lets Chance feel really good for 99% of the match and then snatches victory away from him at the end. He loves the drama. Maybe it's subconscious. Um, but I will say, too, that to consider that he was down 350 before this last session. Now, and in the last session, Phil won whatever it was, 130. Yeah. Um, I always used to say, like, when, people, when, I sit, when I was, you know, I am staged for certain games, but talking about makeup or talking about how much you're down – I always used to think about it, or I do think about it, like, if I can get out of makeup in, like, two sessions, it's not a lot. Right, Which, yeah, you're, you're not buried. Can, you're not buried. If you can get out in a week, it's mm-hmm. not a lot. Like, at the stakes you're playing, it's, uh, even if the number is, like, half a million, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. So he's not down that much. 
it's anybody's game. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. I feel like that with tournaments, especially because it's like, it's not as depressing to be in tourney makeup because you can always get out like as long as you didn't have to move down stakes or something like that. Yeah. If you're 50 K in tourney makeup, but top prize is 150 every time you play a tournament, you're like, okay, you know, you have to run super good, play good and get out with cash. It's like, Oh God, if you really get in a hole where you have to win 10 buy-ins, you're like, Oh, <laughs> that's yeah. a bad feeling. Yeah. But like, for example, when I play the big game, it's like, you know, I've been several times in 300 K makeup, but I buy in for, but I buy in for 50. Yeah. So easily can get out in two sessions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially with the bigger games with the splashier people and rich people, you might just get, you might run up a 200 K stack and get into a 400 K pot. It can easily happen. So, so yeah, it's, it's all in perspective. And I think that we need to keep it in perspective here that, that it's, both these matches are anybody's game right now. For so sure. it'll be interesting to see. And just so you know, I think that they, Doug and Daniel are playing again tonight. And yeah, um, so it's Monday right now, they're playing in an hour and a half. Um, so by the time this finished. airs, uh, there'll be another match. I think they're doing Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, 2.30 Pacific. They've been fun to watch. I, I'm enjoying it. Um, You've been doing commentary as well, which I've caught. It's been good. Yeah. And it's they it's had- very weird though, because it's heads up and I've never played heads up. So I really need to be put with someone who's like a heads up, no limit person. There's so few of them though. Yeah, but There's you so few that. that are willing to do it. Have you been studying with Doug a bit? A little bit? Um, I did some, I did one of the courses. Um, well, I've been doing one of the courses. It's a lot of hours, but just to get a taste of it, just so I'm not going to become a heads up, no limit expert in the course of this challenge. But pretty much my goal was just to understand it enough so that when they put me with someone who is a specialist, I'll know what is a relevant question to ask them. What seems a little weird? Like, oh, that's a weird sizing. What do you make of this? Because right now I don't even have that. Like, you know, I won't know. Oh, wow. He did a three and a half X three bed. Is that weird or is that normal? That kind of thing. Um, so I'm just learning the basics just to be able to commentate it and also to enjoy the match more when you have no clue what's going on. It kind of sucks to watch. You're just like rooting for blood and big pots, but you don't even know what's happening. So I, I found it a little more enjoyable as I'm getting some knowledge about it. That's like me watching. Did you see the movie Tenet? Do you know what I'm talking about? No, I haven't. Everyone said it's so confusing. So I haven't watched it. Yet. Haven't That's me. Yet. I literally gave up like 10 minutes in and I was just like, I'm going to look at the pretty colors. And I have <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. This is not enjoyable, but I can't even begin to scratch the surface. So that was yeah. it. Oh, if you haven't yet, watch Queen's Gambit instead. Uh, I am, we're awesome. almost done. We're in episode five. And it's, oh, it's, cool. Okay. That main actress is so great. I'm She's really like awesome. It. I thought I wasn't going to like it because I don't play chess at all. I pretty much just watched it. At Jen, uh, Jen Shahadi suggested yeah. it and she said it's great and that you don't really need to know what's going on in chess to enjoy it. And I thought it was awesome. I, I was like, you know, when you watch a really good movie or show or you read a really good book, you have like a period of mourning when it's over. I finished that and I was like, oh, I'm like, fuck, why did I watch it so fast? Yeah. <laughs> so good. Yeah, it's good. Um, um what else is on our plate for today? Oh, uh, we talked about election. Oh, I have a friend of the podcast, Landon Tice. Yay. Has won yeah. the Venetian main event um, live tournament. MSPT. What's that? It's the MSPT. It's like a pretty cool title. Like they're a little more prestigious than just the Venetian deep stack. But he won $200,000. 200K. Yeah. Pretty <laughs> Um, and he was updating everyone on his Instagram and on Twitter with different hands and like keeping us. So it was like really a ride that everyone was on. And he, um, I'm really happy for him. He's put in the work and he, he loves poker so much. So he's going to crush. Uh, we knew it when we talked to him on the pod, we knew it before we talked to him on the pod, he lives and breathes poker and it shows, um, I feel like he's excited to study and he's also young and has energy, so his excitement actually probably translates to 12 hours of studying a day, where my excitement for poker, I do an hour, and I'm like, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I forget, it's something else. Oh, yeah, I wanted to say, you know how he was talking about how his mom um, was a little hesitant to let him play poker uh, and said, you know, you have to pay rent and make sure you can make ends meet. I wonder how she feels about it now, because clearly he's doing a little better than making ends meet in poker so the buy-in for this was 1100 and he ended up cashing for just over 200k so pretty good he he outlasted 1122 entrants 
Oh, that's crazy. I would say is I, I bet I'm sure he had um, most of his own action for an 1100. So probably he has some really uh, he has some really good people in his corner that are backing him in some things. So oh. I don't know. I think he he's mentioned Nick Schulman. He's mentioned Chewy. Who else? I don't know who else he bounced his hands off of or what. Um, I don't know if he would sell action to an 1100 if it's like part of his overall backing deal or what. But yeah, I'm sure he's on makeup anyway. Yeah, so we're happy for Landon. Shout out Landon. We, um, I thought about asking him to come on to do a little uh, regale us with the details, but I'm sure he's exhausted. This literally just happened, I think, late last night. So he was awake so late too. I feel like he was awake till eight in the morning or something. He was like, "Thanks again, guys. I'm gonna try to get some sleep." So yeah, I doubt he wants to wake up an hour later to do a pod, but <laughs> he probably would though. He's probably already going through solvers of all the hands he played. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, um, the last thing we wanted to talk about, uh, is that Crouton turned five. So we had a little thing last time when Crouton turned four, when our pod was almost brand new. So I want to see if I can just get him real quick to just say hi. A little crew crew. That feels like so long ago, you guys. So those of you have been with us since the beginning, you remember. Crouton. Oh this my is God. birthday boy. And we got his new little buddy here too, Buttercup. Um, they were so cute. So we ordered them a bunch of stuff from Petco. And obviously he lets her play with everything first because he's a real gentleman. What a good dog. The sweetie. Good boy. I hope he lives to be 25. I said I would give him five years of my life. No problem. If he wants them. <laughs> this is her with his snacks. <laughs> um. We is there anything else that you want to talk about on our little solo pod? This is a nice throwback to our original rake. Yeah, I was just saying that for those of you who've been with us from since the beginning, you know that we used to do almost only solo solo pods. So this is kind of fun. I'm going to be back in Vegas um, at the end of the month. I'm really awesome. looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to um, my my little crew of people at the win. I usually play live at the win and. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, they've been just telling me like I just had such FOMO and watching so many poker vlogs shout out to my fellow vloggers I just I just love live poker I love it so fucking much and this quarantine has really showed me that I I don't know I'll always play live poker for sure yeah I miss it it's like my lifeline when I, when poker is becoming dull I didn't realize how valuable that was to just go play a win 600 um, and just yeah. have a different kind of day where you like interact with other people, you go on dinner break, you, whatever. There's just a lot of good social things about live poker that you miss out on when you're playing online so much. And I didn't realize how much I liked it until it was taken away for what it's been nine months now, eight months, something like that of just having to kind of sit at your home. Um, I'm hoping when you get here though, that everything's not shut down because it's just trending in the wrong way. So hopefully you don't come here all excited to play and they're just like, Nope, you'll be playing on WSOP.com. <laughs> I know. I would be so depressed. I mean, as it is, it's not going to be the best. Obviously, a casino isn't the best place to be. They have masks. They have dividers. They should. Um, but I miss it so fucking much. Uh, I don't know. I, I, you're not going to be able to keep me away. I'm, I just like... <laughs> It's just so fun. I just miss going in and battling. My my roommate Adam Walton, good friend of mine. You know him, me, Tom Panda, Three Bit Panda, and Dan. You know, I just love I love going in and battling the same regs every day, and just getting history with people, and just mm-hmm. it's just so fun. I love I love live cash. Does Chauncey know that you're coming home yet? Has anyone told him? No. And Landon. So those who don't know, my cat is. At, you know, lives with Landon and uh, at the Soft Y house. And he, Landon is very sad to lose him, but I replay it in my, in my brain. Like when I walk in, will he just run over to me? Will it be slow-mo? Will he like jump on me? I don't know. I think he'll, he might cry. I might cry, but I'm very excited. I'm looking at, I'm looking at Airbnbs now and mm-hmm. Not like a lot of them don't accept pets, which sucks, but I'm, I'm holding out for a nice place that, uh, accepts pets. Is Sprague going to come with you or is he not able to? He's not able to, um, the borders, you uh, I, 
Americans can go to Europe, but Europeans still can't come. Trump still has the border closed to Europe. Okay. So the one loophole someone did tell us that he, if Spraggy wanted to, like it was an emergency, he could fly to Mexico and come in through mm-hmm. Mexico, but he can't come. The only people that can come to the States right now from Europe are citizens. Okay. So unfortunately he can't come. It, it sucks. You know, he would come. We're hoping that things, they, they said something about a month ago that they were hoping to open it by the holidays. Mm-hmm. So as soon as it's open, he'll be coming. And again, but again, the cases are, are getting worse and yeah. I don't see them opening. Why would they just open it now since the case are, cases are worse? It doesn't. Unless everyone just gave up. I feel like our country kind of gave up. They kind of gave up. And, but the thing is too, is like in Europe, we're in lockdown. So Europeans and our rates are going down. So Mm -hmm. us coming into the States isn't that big of, isn't as big of a threat as Americans coming into Europe. So it seems backwards to me. I think kind of, I hope people, uh, whatever. I know we always polarize people by talking about COVID and stuff, but with the two vaccines coming up, like Moderna has a 94%, um, effectiveness vaccine coming up and Pfizer had one that's like 90% plus. And they said, I thought this is going to take a really long time to be distributed. But now that two companies are on it, it might be less time where they were talking about December and January of getting the highest risk people vaccinated. So if people can just like hang on, it just sucks. It's the hardest time to convince people to chill. Like Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, everything. Yeah. It's everything is traditional and people get together in groups indoors because it's too cold out. And it's hard to tell people not to do that. And I, I feel like that's going to be such a huge struggle, but it's so unfortunate. It's like if the vaccine came out two months ago, like how many deaths could be prevented by people gathering safely over the holidays instead? It really sucks. But I, I'm just happy. I, I thought the vaccine, remember when we first were talking about this? They're like, yeah, two years or so. They're saying two years before one would even be created. Um, that's deemed safe enough to use. And then now it's not even, it's nine months. And it's like, in production already it's crazy it, it there's a light at the end of the tunnel for sure i um i'm going i'm going to florida first and it's gonna be interesting to see my dad's like oh in florida we don't believe no, not, not we my dad <laughs> believes in it but like this like in florida like it doesn't exist apparently <laughs> so our country's crazy every state is like its own weird country <laughs> yeah <laughs> but <the> it's <laughs> It's insane. Like my dad lives in like one of the, like in a major city too, where it's like the best, like in the boonies, it's even worse. He said, but he's like, at least where mm-hmm. I live, people somewhat believe in it. But outside of that, it's like nonsense. So we'll see. good my, luck everyone. <laughs> my dad's, my dad's 56. And so he's not really high risk. He's got no health mm-hmm. conditions, but he keeps being like, yeah, like, just don't see any old people. And I'm like, dad, you're kind of old. Like, <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> he's like, nah, I'm not high risk. I'm good. I'm like, mm, he, he's, he's good. But like, mm, but yeah. yeah, it would still, even if you don't die from it, like who wants to be sick for a month? Ugh. No, I know. I know. It's bad. <laughs> I know for sure. But do we have any positive note? I tried to end on Crew Town turning five, like, yay. And then we just start talking about COVID again. <laughs> it's hard not to. Um, but Crew Town loves COVID and so does Buttercup because we just stay home. They're like, this disease rules. They heard about the vaccine. They're like, this sucks. Like, I don't think it's going to be safe for years. I think you shouldn't take it. Oh, <laughs> so sweet. Okay. <laughs> We're like, we have nothing else. I, I think we got nothing else. We covered all the topics that we wanted to. Um, yeah, I don't know. And hey, if you can still bet on the election, go for it. <laughs> yeah. When is that going to stop? That is like my funniest, I don't know. That's that's the funniest thing going on right now with poker players is that like both sides still betting strong uh, two weeks after it's been called. I think it's going to be going on for a while. Until like January 20th when it's actually declared really over. Yeah. And I think that even when Trump leaves, he's still going to be putting up a stink. He's still going to be tweeting. He's, he's still going to have a base. There's still, we obviously we see there's some rioting mm-hmm. going on in, in DC and stuff. It's going to be going on for a while, but 
there's no merit to it. So, yeah. So get your 10 to one. Get, <laughs> I think said that if someone would offer, if, if someone was offering like 2000 to one right now on Trump. Oh, I would take that. Yeah. I would take that. Just I would take case. I throw 10 bucks on it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Whatever. But not going to happen. Yeah. Anyways, guys. All right. We'll Till next time. Today. We'll see you guys next time. Enjoy the heads up matches that are springing up all over the place. Uh, the Galfon challenge is uh, on again this week. So is the Doug Dean Eggs challenge. And I don't know, me and Marla are going to throw down against someone at some point, but it's going to be probably heads up Scrabble or Monopoly or something. Cause I, I just, I don't know poker good enough. Yeah. Maybe me, me be Spraggy. Yeah. <laughs> MMA. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. Till, till next time though. Thanks for tuning in and uh, have a great week. Bye guys.